Hey up guys, so continuing my 2019 Oscar predictions, today's category that I'm going to be predicting and discussing is Best Actor. Quick rundown of how this video is going to go. I'm going to list the nominees for Best Actor, then tell you who got snubbed, in my opinion, and then I'm going to list the nominees' previous history with the Academy, then I'm going to tell you who I want to win, give you some analysis, and then I'm going to tell you who I think will win and give you some analysis. All good to go? Let's get to it! The nominees for the 2019 Best Actor Oscar are Christian Bale for Vice, Bradley Cooper for A Star Is Born, Willem Dafoe for At Eternity's Gate, Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody, and Viggo Mortensen for Green Book. Right, so my initial thoughts with the Best Actor category, there wasn't a whole lot of surprise. There was a little surprise with Willem Dafoe's appearance, but the nominations for Bradley Cooper, Rami Malek, Christian Bale, and Viggo Mortensen were all pretty much expected. It was always a question as to who would get the fifth and final slot, and I will admit I wasn't expecting it to be Willem Dafoe because he wasn't nominated at the BAFTAs or the SAGs or the Critics' Choice Awards, so his appearance in the Oscar category for Best Actor was a bit of a surprise, but at the same time, I thought he was wonderful and had to turn in his gates, so it's nice to see him in here regardless. I think he's a magnificent and underrated actor. But there was definitely some stiff competition for that fifth spot, so that brings me nicely into the snubs. The person who I thought that was most shocking that wasn't in this category was John David Washington for his performance in Black Klansman. His name was coming up a lot during the award season circuit, and Adam Driver got a nomination for Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars, so I was half expecting him to make it in, but yeah, was surprised that he didn't make the cut. I was feeling very confident for Robert Redford to get into this category for The Old Man and the Gun, but I think I was the only one. Instead of honouring Willem Dafoe, I thought they would have honoured Robert Redford for his swan song performance and sort of given him a nod as a gesture to say, we love your career, and if this is your final performance, here's an Oscar nomination for it. But no, he didn't make it in, which is a shame, but hey, there's only five slots. And of course, we cannot forget about the two first performances that should have made it into this category. We're talking Ryan Gosling for his performance in First Man, and also Ethan Hawke for his performance in First Reform. First Man, First Reform. First men, get it? God, I'm such a loser! They were both superb in their respective films, but neither of them got an attraction over award season, sadly. I have seen all five of the Best Actor nominees' performances this year, and I'm about to give a very unpopular opinion, but the only performance out of the five that I wasn't crazy about was Rami Malek's portrayal of Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm sorry, Internet, I just don't think he was as amazing as everyone was making him out to be. It's just an opinion, so relax. And I know it's an unpopular opinion because he has won the Golden Globe and the SAG for his portrayal of Freddie Mercury. But for me, it was one of those performances that he eased into. Like, he got better as the film progressed and he certainly came alive in the final act in the Live Aid scene. That's where he really shined and that whole final act salvaged the film and people were so blown away by it that they just forgave everything that was wrong with his performance in the first two thirds of the film, like the very stiff, overbite delivery and the wonky accent that he doesn't quite nail, but people seem to forgive anyways. Like I said in my review, I didn't think he was bad, but I didn't think he was great. For me, it was a performance that ranks somewhere in the middle of all the performances that I've seen this year. But one interesting fact about this category, besides Bradley Cooper, everybody else in this category is nominated for playing a real life person. And one thing that this category is certainly lacking is diversity. Apart from Rami Malek, who is of Egyptian origins, everybody else is a white dude. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame because we could have had John David Washington in this category for Black Klansman, or even Chadwick Boseman for Black Panther, or Stefan James for If Beale Street Could Talk, but yeah, diversity really isn't being shown in this category this year. Okay, so now the time has come to look at the nominees' previous history with the Academy, and it's actually a very well-seasoned bunch of actors in this group, because there's only one person who is a first-time nominee, and that is Rami Malek. Everybody else has been nominated numerous times before. This is Viggo Mortensen's third nomination with Green Book. His two previous nominations for Best Actor came for Eastern Promises in 2008 and Captain Fantastic in 2017. And he's had no wins so far. This is Christian Bale's fourth nomination with Vice. He's been nominated for Best Actor once before for American Hustle in 2014, and he's been nominated for Best Supporting Actor twice, once in The Fighter in 2011, and the other being The Big Short in 2016. And The Big Short was directed by Adam McKay, who also directed Vice, so he's been directed to two Oscar nominations by the same person, Christian Bale. And don't forget, Christian Bale did take home the Oscar for his performance in The Fighter. Willem Dafoe has been nominated four times in total. This is his first time being nominated for Best Actor with At Eternity's Gate, 
His previous three nominations for Best Supporting Actor came with Platoon in 1987, Shadow of the Vampire in 2001, and The Florida Project in 2018. And sadly, he's had no wins yet. And last but by no means least, we have Bradley Cooper, who has been nominated for a plethora of Oscars this year, one for Best Picture, one for Best Adapted Screenplay, and one for Best Actor, all for A Star Is Born. He's had another previous nomination for producing with American Sniper back in 2015. He was also up for Best Actor for American Sniper, along with his nomination for Best Actor in Silver Linings Playbook in 2013. And sandwiched in between Silver Linings Playbook and American Sniper, he managed to get himself a Best Supporting Actor nomination for his performance in American Hustle. That brings his total to seven nominations now, and he has yet to win any. But with three nominations this year, you probably thinking, yeah, he's bound to win one this year. Think again, guys, Bradley Cooper is not the front runner in any of the categories that he's nominated for this year. But after this year's Oscars are done with, and if he doesn't win anything, he will skyrocket up the list of people who are overdue to win one. He'll be joining the likes of Amy Adams and Annette Bening. Now let's talk about who I want to win. Out of all five of the performances this year, I would have to say that the performance I was most impressed by was Christian Bale in Vice. There was just a level of absorption in Bale's performance that none of the other performances matched for me. With Christian Bale's performance, it wasn't about him being the most charismatic or the most charming or a tortured artist or musician. It was very much a reactive performance. Dick Cheney was a strategist, and that's what I love most about Christian Bale's performance, is that you can see him thinking and listening and really reacting to the other actors on screen, and you can see the wheels in his head turning and like how he's planning and strategizing as the film progresses, and I was just so absorbed watching how his mind worked and how he was playing the game. And Christian Bale just catches the lovely nuances of the, the strategy and the game there. I was just glued to the screen. Even though I would love to see Willem Dafoe take it home for At Eternity's Gate, I just don't think enough people have seen it. Hardly anybody I know has seen it and no one's really talking about it. So I can't imagine all the Academy members have seen it and are raving about it like they are Christian Bale or Bradley Cooper or Rami Malek. His nomination was such a surprise, but even though I'm so glad he got a nomination, I just don't think he has a chance of winning it. And I just don't think Viggo Mortensen has won enough to be in the conversation either. And same with Bradley Cooper, even though he was the early frontrunner for a while, he just hasn't got any of the trophies to back him up to win the Oscar. So let's talk about who I think will win. At this point now, it really is just a two-way race between Christian Bale and Remy Malek. For a while, it seemed like Christian Bale was slightly ahead because he had won the Critics' Choice Award as well as a Golden Globe, but Remy Malek also won a Golden Globe, and then he went and won the SAG Award, so now he's sort of slipped ahead, so it really is neck and neck now. It'll be interesting to see who wins the BAFTA, between Rami Malek and Christian Bale. In theory, it should be Christian Bale because he's playing on his home turf because he's Welsh. But if Rami Malek does win at the BAFTAs, that will probably mean that he's more favored by the Academy as well. But if Christian Bale does win the BAFTA, that's just gonna make the race even tighter. It really is just gonna be a photo finish. Honestly, Best Actor is one of the hardest categories to call this year. But it's the SAG Award that is the most reliable precursor as to who's going to win Best Actor at the Oscars. So it should be Rami Malek who has the edge, but there are always exceptions to the rules. Just look at Casey Affleck winning Best Actor at the Oscars two years ago, even though Denzel Washington was the one who took home the SAG Award that same year. Is it going to be the same situation with Christian Bale snatching the Oscar away from Remy Malek at the last second? It's certainly a possibility. They both have push and pull factors working for and against them. They both played historical figures, but between the two of them, Remy Malek played someone who is far more likable and the Academy might prefer to honor a performance of someone who's well-loved than someone who's, well, despised. <laughs> Will the Academy want to glorify Dick Cheney? That is the question. Both Bale and Malik's performances are what you would call transformative performances, as in they did a lot to really transport themselves into the bodies of the people that they were portraying. However, Bale clearly went a lot further than Malik did with the substantial weight gain, and the Academy usually eats that stuff up. And what's interesting is that both their respective films were only fairly well received by critics, but they are both up the best picture regardless, so as far as their film quality goes, they're kind of on the same turf. Christian Bale, however, has had a richer experience with the Academy. This is his fourth nomination now, and he's well respected for his craft and his method and his dedication 
Revolution. And yeah, he's been playing the game a lot longer than Remy Malik has, but he has had a previous win for The Fighter, which wasn't too long ago, it was only 2011. So if the Academy are feeling more diplomatic, they might want to honor someone for the first time rather than giving someone their second Oscar, which in theory could give Malik a boost. And if history tells us anything, it's that the Academy loves honoring male leading performances in films that were written by Anthony McCartan. Just look at Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything and Gary Oldman just last year for Darkest Hour. Will they go for the hat trick though with Rami Malek? If they do, then every leading male in Hollywood will be wanting to do the next project by Anthony McCartan. So as you can see, it is a very close race, but I just have to pick someone who I think will win. So my prediction for the 2019 Best Actor Oscar will go to, drum roll please. It will be, Christian Bale for Vice. Now I know some of you are probably thinking that the only reason I've gone with Christian Bale is because I actually want Christian Bale to win over Remy Malek. And yes, while there is some truth to that argument, I still think Christian Bale has a very good chance of being victorious on the night. You wanna know why? Because he got fat! <laughs> Yes, the Academy loves it when an actor balloons up and shrinks down for a role. Five out of the last six Best Actor winners have dramatically changed their body size in order to win the Oscar. And in theory, Christian Bale should be able to triumph again. He shrunk himself so thin that he won the Oscar for The Fighter, and I think the Academy will reward him again for putting on this substantial amount of weight to play Dick Cheney. But it's not just the fact that he put on so much weight to play the role. Even though Remy Malek did take home the SAG award, I still think it will be Christian Bale who takes home the Oscar. Remy Malek does tick a lot of the Academy boxes, but at the end of the day, he doesn't do all of Freddie Mercury's singing. He does do a fantastic karaoke impression, and he's certainly got the mannerisms and the posture of Freddie Mercury down. But for me, it's just a superb lip sync performance, whereas Christian Bale goes the full distance. Remy Malek's accent wasn't perfect, and his prosthetics compared to Christian Bale's were a hindrance. They didn't help the performance, they were distracting. But I will admit, Malik did give a good performance, particularly when he's performing as Freddie Mercury. But that's what it is, a good performance. But is it good enough? Whereas Christian Bale's performance was flawless. He nailed the accent, he put on a substantial amount of weight, and he nailed the posture, the mannerisms, the idiosyncrasies of Dick Cheney. He really immersed himself into the role and he got lost in there. Like, you forgot you're watching Christian Bale at certain points. It's a performance that just feels more lived in than Rami Malek, and I think the Academy will see that. So that's why I'm putting my money on Christian Bale to take home the Best Actor Oscar. There we go, guys, that is my prediction as to who I think will win Best Actor at the 2019 Oscars. But remember, this is a discussion I would love to hear from you guys. Who do you think will win? Who do you think should win? Where do you think? Be sure to get involved in that discussion below in the comments section. Add me on Twitter if you want my reactions to all the Oscar winners on February 24th. And I've got more Oscar predictions coming to you soon, so if you don't want to miss any of them, be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell if you want those alerts. Thank you so much for watching, guys, for more things related to the Oscars, movies, TV, and popcorn culture. I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.